I hit live. It should be going. All right, Shalom. 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 We're the brothers from Great Millstone, Atlanta, here with another live stream. Uh, and Lord willing, it's edifying. But before we get started, as always, want to give our praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem Rakhabagash. We'd like to give double honors to our elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Also, want to say peace, safety, much love, and blessing to the Akim across the four corners of the earth that are pushing out this truth and truth and sincerity and putting their lives on the line to do so. We want to say Shalom to you, brothers. Um, and as you all can see from the title, uh, we're not living in a time of complacency, all right? This is not the time to be settled on your leads or at ease, okay? You should be up, watching, um, uh, digging in, uh, uh, occupied in prophecy, you know, building, trimming. You know, these are the times that we're in because there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble, you know, uh, contrary to what. Uh, these other Israelite counts may tell you, you know, shit's about to hit the fan, man. You know, are you not watching the news? You know, are you not seeing the prophecies unfold right before your eyes? You know, because if you're in a state of complacency, that means you're totally oblivious to what's going on around you. Okay? You're just comfortable. All right? You're straddling the fence. You, you, you're stagnant. Okay? You're thinking there's no room for improvement. All right. And that's a that's a bad mindset uh, to be in, especially coming into dangerous times because you leave yourself open or susceptible to anything to happen mm -hmm. to you. OK, you know, um, you got that definition, bro. Yeah, I got it. Uh, this is the definition of complacent uh, from the Webster Dictionary. Um, and it says um, marked by self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied. By unawareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. Yeah, you're unaware of actual dangers, man. The troubling times that we're coming in. Esau's coming down, you know, on us uh, with great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. That's but right. if you're in the state of being complacent, you're totally unaware of what this guy has up his sleeve for you, man. Mm -hmm. By you being an Israelite. Shit, yeah. even his own people. If he's going to destroy them, what more are you? All mm -hmm. right, so that's even more reason to get right with the Lord, man. And, and continue to uh, advance yourself and not be, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. comfortable. And thinking that, you know, you know a few precepts and you know uh, you're an Israelite and that's just enough. You know, mm -hmm. no, man, there's always work to be doing, all right? And we're coming into the time of the Passover, you know, and, <clears throat> and this is the time or the season, man, mm -hmm. that you should be uh, uh, trimming, uh Moderating yourself, mm -hmm. adding temperance, all of these Examine. things, man. Examining. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a laundry list of things that you can be doing right now. And if you're not doing those, man, hey, you're in a state of complacency. All right? If, if I can say, there's another uh, synonym for that word um, complacent is uh, plateau. Mm -hmm. And I got it here pulled up on the etymology. And it says, it says, enter a period of stability or stagnation. Mm -hmm. Cease to rise. Because it, uh, when you look at you know a mountain or, or um, a rock or something, the plateau it, it always it always grows first, and then it, it levels out to the flat ground. There's no more growth. But the scriptures, uh, I believe it was Paul who said, "When I was a child, I speak as a child, you know. But when I uh, became a man, I put away uh, the foolish thing." Mm -hmm. Which means Paul understood that in order to keep um, growing and building in the truth, you had to grow. That's right. You know, just to add on to your point, but you got it. Yeah, and, you know, the scriptures tell us out of our um, belly shall flow uh, rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. All right? And li living waters is constantly moving. When the water becomes uh, stagnant yeah. or, or just sitting there, all types of bacteria builds up, germs, and uh, uh, what have you. So by us being, you know, uh, lively stones as well, man, you should be constantly building and moving and working towards a goal. You know, whether it be spiritually or some, something you want to do carnally, you know the the the, the checks and 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 the money is being pushed out. You know it's been a big um, it's been a big uh, push in our account to take these things. You know because we know money is a defense yes. to take this money and invest it and put it in certain places. All right, that's another form of of, of not being complacent, thinking 
I, you know, they give me this X amount of money, you know, I'm just going to save it and I'm going to sit on it. No, nah, man, you should be making plans right now, all right? You should be one step ahead of this devil. That's what every other Jake is out here doing, the PLs, is spending the money and, and sitting on it and dipping in it when they get ready, you know? But by us knowing the times that we're coming in, we're going to need that de that defense. We know ultimately uh, Yahweh Bashimi Al-Shah is our defense. Mm -hmm. But while we're yet here, man, we have to use the tools which was given unto us, man, and use mm -hmm. wisdom, okay? Um, it was a moral in definition. That was it. It's like, uh, did you get the, the second point? On, uh, oh, you, on, you got the Marion Webster? Yeah. Well, I got it. I mean, I got yeah. I was yeah. following yeah. along. Okay. It says, um, because in, in, the, in the second half of that first point, of as far as complacency, it says when it comes to safety, complacency can be dangerous, mm -hmm. which is true. You know what I'm saying? Especially in these times, with us being in the, in the last days, like the uh, officer said, the warning of Yahweh Bashi Al Shah is going out at an all time high, man. Okay, according to the um, the prophecies and, and the spirit that uh, Yahweh Bashi Al Shah has put on uh, his servants, man, the ministers, the prophets. Mm -hmm. But also, um, in the second in the second part of the, of the definition of complacency, it says an instance of usually unaware or uninformed self satisfaction. You see what I'm saying? So, like the brother said, as far as plateauing. You know, it's it's because you're you're purposely be, you're purposely being ignorant. You know what I'm saying? You're you're actually fighting off the warning. You know what I'm saying? The warning is going forth, it's beating loud and clear, and it's 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 uh, undeniable. Okay, but at the, at the same time, you got a lot of people of our nation who are purposely denying the warning, man. And the warning and the, the warning goes out for a purpose because the warning signifies there's something else coming after the warning. Mm -hmm. So if you're purposely um, you know, feeding your flesh and satisfying yourself and not taking heed to the spirit. Mm -hmm. Hey man, when when the when the when the um the the result of what the warning was going out for comes in and meets you at your front door, you got you got no excuse. You got no cloak, you got no hedge against that uh, um the force that the individual individual is warning you about. Mm -hmm. you know, and really uh, that <clears throat> that phrase ignorance is bliss kind of sums up everything the brothers were saying. Mm -hmm. If you know if you heard the warning if you know what's, you can see what's coming in the light. I'll say this, a lot of Israelites uh, know, all right, because we're in the time of where knowledge has been increased, like it says in Daniel, the 12th chapter. A lot of people know the Israelites. A lot of people know, starting to get the idea or the, you know, that Esau is the, the true devil. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of starting to see how the plans are unraveling of what mm -hmm. Esau wants to do to them. They know, but yet they still want to do the same things uh, that satisfy their flesh. And act like they don't hear the warning. So therefore, that's mm -hmm. the ignorance is bliss. Yeah. See, they purposely do not want to. I, mean, I hear you, but uh, <laughs> I gotta go get hit this lick real quick. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. No doubt. It. All right. You had um, that Zep Zephaniah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the book of Zephaniah, chapter one, verse uh, twelve. It says, "And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles." Mm -hmm. And punish the men that are settled on their leads, that say in their heart, The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will not do good, neither will he do evil. Yeah, hey, that's a comfortable statement, man. Mm -hmm. When you believe that the Lord will do no good or nor e no nor evil, mm -hmm. you know, and it says the Lord will search Jerusalem, you know, mm -hmm. Jerusalem being the people before a place. Mm -hmm. You know, we too long ago not uh did a stream about judgment was started in the house of Israel. Yeah. So those of you that are settled amongst our people, the judgment is going to start with you. Mm. All right? That are, go yeah, ahead. So like, can you read that yeah. again? Because you got to explain it to Jake, like how Jake would talk. Yeah, God. Yeah. This is uh, Zephaniah 1 and 12. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles mm -hmm. and punish the men that are settled on their leaves that say in their heart, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushua will not do good, neither will he do evil. Right. It's like a Jake who, you know, he might say, you know, two niggas about to have a nigga moment or whatever, mm -hmm. talking shit. Yeah. Just for a lack of better words. One dude is like, be talking mess. He's like, man, that nigga ain't going to do nothing. Mm -hmm. man, he, ain't about, he ain't about that, man. He ain't about to do it. That's how Jake is. Mm -hmm. And that's literally what it's saying right there. That's how the Lord is. That's how... You know, y'all people are talking. Mm -hmm. like, you, ain't talking. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And have no and super complacent ignorance, bliss, all of that compiled in one until it, and like like the officer said, until it strikes, the mm -hmm. result of it comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that that's disrespectful too. Yeah, because yeah. like Jake and his mindset, they're saying the most high will not do good or evil. So and really that's a, a denial of Yahweh Shai, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, because not only are they saying, man, I ain't worried about the bad stuff, man, the evil times, I ain't worried about that but shit. I ain't worried about the good stuff either, man. I ain't man, the Lord ain't coming back, man. He'll come back, you know, when I'm when I'm dead and gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not only is that um a, a lack of fear of the, the, the judgment the most high can bring on the you know on the evil side, that's also a lack of respect of the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shah, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we uh we deal with the King James version of the Bible, um, but these other translations, you know, they give you a, a, a clearer understanding um on most or sometimes in the scriptures, you know, long as they're not adding or taking away from what the word truly says. So I have that same verse that the brother read uh, in Zephaniah 1, uh, verse 12, in the uh, ESV uh, translation. And it reads, At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, mm -hmm. and I will punish the men who are complacent. Mm -hmm. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord would, will not do good, or would he do ill. Mm -hmm. All right? So that statement is a statement of complacency, right? right. You know, um, and it says you're going to be punished for it, man. Right. Yeah. You know, because if you're in a state of of, of, of awareness and you know watching, mm -hmm. that leaves no room for complacency because you know what's coming, you know, uh, in in the future. So mm. you do things to align yourself. To the best of your ability and through the spirit and power you have about seeing you outside yeah. to, to prepare yourself, man, and be ready. Okay? I got something. Go ahead, bro. Because I wanted to land back on what you said in, in uh, the officer you died had said, too. Because he said, the script said in Zephaniah, they would neither do good nor evil. Uh, and I wanted to harp on the good part. You know, like, man, it's at the same time, it's like, man, what? They're saying, like, what can he do for me? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. uh, the second Ezra chapter 9, I'm going to start at 9. It says, There shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Mm. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Mm. Verse 10, there's a point. It says, For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Mm. So even so, they're like, Man, he ain't about to do no good for me. Well, yeah, your eyeballs open today. That was something they don't they don't recognize like the the little small things that the Lord does for it. Like the scriptures say, He uh, loaded loadeth us daily with benefits, mm -hmm. and people don't recognize that, don't give any uh, uh, recognition or uh, credence to the Lord for those benefits that He gives on a daily basis to them mm -hmm. because they have not known Him because they're complacent and they don't think He's doing nothing. Yeah. Because, yeah. like you said, they, he, they don't think he exists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Psalm 36 and 1, there's no fear of the Lord. Man. Yeah. 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 They think the things that Lord are doing for them are uh, necessities. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's not necessary for the Lord to do anything for you, man. You know, he, he does the things uh, which he uh, deems is necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, our thought is not his thought. Our ways are not his ways. That's right. All right. So, the word, I I was looking for a word where you just think things are supposed to happen. Um, like, I guess the things are um, inadvertent or, or whatnot. The word slipped me, but. What, like you're entitled or something? Entitled. Oh, there no, you go. No. Jake walked around here with a sense of entitlement. Like, mm -hmm. Lord has to do these things for them. Mm -hmm. All right? Or like, or like it's coming from just a, a, a source that is not our power. Mm -hmm. Like, right. it's just supposed to happen. Yeah. You know, that's a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. Like the source, they don't look at the source in which these benefits are coming from. They just know that they're there for them to use. Yeah. You know, back in high school, I used to play. You know, in football. I had a high school coach, one of my head coaches. He said, "Cause I play football in you know relatively decent area, you know suburbs, whatever. And when you play football, you gotta be tough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's like, a lot of y'all be acting like some silver spoon titty babies. Yeah." Like spoon fed, prima donna, prima donnas, mm -hmm. you know, entitled, thinking you could just get handouts and yeah. you're, you know, nothing, you don't have to work for nothing. Mm -hmm. That's how Jake. That's how Jake uh, uh, 
is, and that's how the Lord sees them. Yeah. Like, you know, handouts, and y'all have not known me. Yeah. I'm letting y'all live. I'm giving y'all seeds. I'm mm-hmm. letting y'all have a job. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah, bro. If I, if I could say that reminds me of, uh, and I think we bought that piece up out there when he's, um, Ezekiel 6, uh, Ezekiel 11. 11. Yeah, when we were talking, you know, when the Lord was basically telling Ezekiel to warn the uh, people, and they was basically saying, like, no, nah, this city is basically going to be protected. Mm-hmm. Like, they were saying, we're the oh, cow yeah. joint, and, and, and uh, mm-hmm. the city is the cow joint, we're the uh-huh. flesh. Then when later on, when you read down the line, the Lord basically said that, that the city isn't uh, cow joint, and that he's going to uh, judge the border of Israel, man. Yeah. You know, which is the same thing. These, the two-thirds of our people uh, are always going to uh, have in their mindset that the Lord is not coming back mm-hmm. to judge this place, man. Mm-hmm. You know, but, because they're complacent. If I can say real, too, just going back to the analogy the Officer Kosh Kuala brought out, <clears throat> a lot of individuals will be in that mindset. They just be given a certain level of natural talent. Mm-hmm. And the, the old saying is true, man. Hard work always overcomes natural talent, man. Because for people who just are have a sense of entitlement just off what they've just naturally been given, in which your talents are a gift. Mm-hmm. And because uh, our people don't understand the nature of our Heavenly Father and our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bash, Yahweh Shai, they don't understand that their ability to and, and inclination to do certain things is not of them. It was given unto them. Yeah. You see, and that's what and that's what a lot of times create that plateau effect. That's why you see a lot, you see a lot of Jake, you know, high school superstars, the college yeah. superstars get to the league. Then they get they get the, the benefits of being yeah. in that position of being in the league, mm-hmm. got the money, the notoriety, the fame, yeah, and they man. get they get swallowed up, man. Yeah. And they and they create what? That plateau effect. Yeah. Because they're thinking of I'm so it's really a sense of idolatry as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm so great, I can do this. Everybody always told me I can do this. But then when you meet somebody who who's been given the same level of talents, yeah. or even not as talented as you, they work their ass they off, man. It. They surpass you, man. Well that's that's someone being egotistical. Mm-hmm. And we go into the word ego. Literally, the definition is I. Mm. Literally. <laughs> oh, that's why. Uh, I just the, going back to the football analogy. That's why during like the college, uh, from the college to the NFL, like during the draft, they always got that background story mm-hmm. on how that certain player grinded and he ain't, he came up with nothing and he mm-hmm. had no no help, but he grinded to the level that he was at now. Mm-hmm. If I could say to man, real quick. And a lot of times in those instances, those uh, college scouts, I mean, the, the pro scouts or the pro teams, they'll prefer somebody who comes from a rough background mm-hmm. because they know they're going to keep that level of hunger yeah. because this will be their first time seeing it. If you got a Jake or an individual who come from that silver spoon, that silver spoon uh, lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Or they, you know, really smart in academics and it's like, well, he won't just end up getting a job. He, he ain't really, he not really here, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because that stuff will be political too. Yeah. He's not really here to really, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, give me the most that you can get. They'll prefer they'll prefer the individual who went through something versus the the, the individual who didn't. Yeah. Because they know they're gonna maintain that level of hunger, man, because it's a grind, man. Right. Mm-hmm. I got some too, you know. Right. Well this is just going into um kind of what brother's saying as far as um, you know, Jake not really understanding the opportunity that we have and understanding the times that we're in, man. And it's really because they're following after Esau Edom, man, the spirit that he pushes. Mm-hmm. This is John chapter eight, verse forty two. Yahweh Shai said unto them, If the Most High were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from the Most High, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. See, that's what Yahweh Shai, uh, understanding the natural order of things. Yahweh Shai came through meek and home, man. Okay, lowly on the, on the, on the uh, back of an ass, man. And he's the, the, the king of kings, man, the lord of lords. Mm-hmm. And he still was uh, 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 coming in the spirit of order and letting everybody know, hey, Hey, I'm only here because my heavenly father sent me, man. And he put the spirit on me to do this mission. And I'm here, I'm here for about I'm about my father's business, man. All right, continuing on. John 8 and 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. And see, Jake is still in that same spirit today, man. Okay, they following after the uh the doctrine and ideology that even Esau is pushing. In which even Esau is pushing you to be in a place of complacency, man. Mm-hmm. Even going to pushing these uh, checks and these stimulus packages, mm-hmm. he's doing that because he's trying to keep his kingdom going. And a lot of individuals of our nation they're falling right in that same spirit after Edom Esau, and that's why they're living up uh, in, in the spirit in place of complacency, man. And just finishing out, John continuing in John eight and forty four, he was a murderer from the beginning, and he's killing y'all spirits, man. 
He's killing your spirits and your opportunity for salvation. All right? And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. You see, and what, and what we're telling uh, our, our nation, the so-called uh, uh, Negro, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelites want to spread abroad is, this is the truth, man. All right? Mm -hmm. Trimming, okay, uh, um, rebuking Satan. All right? Not following in the ways of uh, uh, Edom, Esau, you know, the beast system. All right? And uh, trusting in how by Hashem, how Hashem, on a daily, consistent basis, man, is the truth. That's the way, and that's the path of life and salvation. Okay? But if y'all, if, if an individual of our nation can't get that, it's because they're up there following the devil, man. Yep. Okay, and they're going to continue to move in that spirit unless Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shah put the spirit on them to repent and earnestly seek to please him, man. Yeah. I got, uh, uh, you got something? I just had a quick one back in uh, the office of the officer he died on how uh, basically uh, our people took on the spirit of, uh, of what Esau was giving out as being complacent. So this is Psalms chapter 10, and I'll start at verse. Uh, Verse 10, it says, He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, The Most High hath forgot, forgotten. He hideth his face, he will never see it. Arise, O Yahweh, O the Most High, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Because when you read up in that verse, it tells you how Esau basically, you know, sets the neck, you know, for the poor. Which are the poor are who the Israelites, mm -hmm. you know. So he chops the our people, you know, with the spirit of being complacent, man. Mm -hmm. You know, go work your nine to five job, you know, get off, t go to the grocery store, cook, repeat, mm -hmm. repeat, mm -hmm. repeat, repeat. You know, it reminds you of uh, uh, hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, get out, get out, mm -hmm. get out. But like I say, hypnosis in a sense is because. Like you said, it's like a, the rat race. Yeah, yeah. It's like a repetitive thing, but it lulls you to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you get so complacent and stuck and comfortable in that in that state that Esau puts you in that you think it's just no other way. Yeah. And then you're stuck in that in that position. It's like uh, a bad habit. Mm -hmm. You continue a bad habit, you get comfortable with that bad ha habit. Yeah. If you lie to yourself. That's why you got to be careful with what you uh, uh, feed yourself in your mind and how you think in your mind. That's why the scriptures say, rebuke my, you know, uh, try my reins. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you continue to tell yourself something that's a lie about yourself, you're going to end up believing it and get comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Hey, if I can say to uh, Bumper Shop, you know, this, uh, the saying you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. Because the older you get and the more you get set in your ways, the more complacent. You, you, get know, settled. you get settled. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's why if you ever dealt with a old a older person on a job and you try to show them some or a new innovative way to do something, mm -hmm. you know, it could potentially make their job easier. Mm -hmm. But they're so set in their ways because they've been doing it the same way for so long mm -hmm. and got comfortable and complacent that's it. that you trying to teach them something new is like for them pouring water on a hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why it says yeah. you can't uh, put new wine in an old bottle yeah. unless it were first. Because mm -hmm. these, you know, some just that, uh, that an analogy, the word I think of is obstinate. Mm -hmm. yeah. like heavily stubborn. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got it. Go. Kind. Uh, quick precept. Mm -hmm. uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because sin is against an evil work, yeah. mm -hmm. is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the son of man is fully setting them to do evil. <laughs> so if you've been doing something for so long and so long and you haven't been corrected or punished, mm -hmm. you're in a state of mind that shit, I'm good. Yeah. What I'm doing is, it's gotten me this far. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it's, there's no need for me to try to do better. Mm -hmm. That's why I was curious, uh, I think that Genesis 49 uh, speak of uh, uh, Jake, uh, uh, Judah, as that old lion, man. Mm -hmm. You know, because they complacent. Yep. You know, the, the spirit within them 
is to be a lion, but it, from from Esau beating them out, yeah. beating them down over the year, that just become complacent and just yeah. want to sit on that, that reclining chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake is that damn ninety three year old cop right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. He retired yet, but he's ninety three, still working. Yeah, right. like give up. Bro. <laughs> I'm Jake. running away from you. Right. Because <laughs> hey, if you talk to an older Jake, they already know the white man is devil. But they ain't gonna do nothing about it. Right. It's, it is what it is. So, I got mine. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Sit in the rocking chair and, and drink a forty. Right. You mm-hmm. know that's it. That's yeah. a that's a state of complacency. Mm-hmm. And we can't be in that mindset, man. Knowing that the times that we're coming into, because mm-hmm. like the uh, the definition said, unawareness during a time of danger. Mm-hmm. That's the worst thing mm-hmm. to be is complacent, man. Peace mm-hmm. and safety, sudden destruction. S- sudden yeah. destruction. Yep. Yeah. Like the brother quoted, uh, First Thessalonians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When they shall say peace and safe, that's the ultimate level of complacency. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, ain't nothing really happening. Yeah. You know, they've been saying the Lord coming back for mm-hmm. two thousand years since oh, born. Yeah. Oh, COVID nineteen. It's twenty. It's it's yeah, it's, right. it's seventy. Yeah. yeah. We about to get back to normal. Mm-hmm. And then Jake fall right into the trip. Yeah, a, a pandemic happened every hundred years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Bro, Esau is feeding you that narrative, man. And Jake fall right into it. Fall right into it. But mm-hmm. that was all I had on that one. Yeah. You got more on that. Uh, no, I don't, that was just the point I wanted to hit. Yeah, appreciate it. I, go ahead. I got a quick one. Yeah. Uh, since, you know, like the brother was, uh, Officer uh, oh, Rock yeah. was saying uh, about, you know, the past server coming, coming along, I just want to get a, a script that shows the Lord is telling us not to be complacent. Mm-hmm. So Exodus, uh, I'll start at 11 and 10 and then jump down. Uh, the Exodus 11 and 10, it says that Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, which were signs and messages, mm-hmm. warnings, messages. Yeah. All right. It says before Pharaoh and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. So he, they did all these signs and wonders as a message of, you know, to, to Pharaoh, like, hey, you got to let us go. But it's also a message unto all of Israel. It's about time to go. So prepare yourself because mm-hmm. all these things are happening for our release. So jump it down to verse 11 because uh, verse 12 starts going into the institution of the, of the Passover. And this is verse 11. It says, uh, and thus shall you eat. I'll start at 9 or 8. It says, uh, and they shall eat the flesh in the night, uh, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall, uh, they shall eat it. Eat not it of it raw, mm-hmm. nor sodden at all the water, the, with water mm-hmm. being boiled, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and the pertinence thereof, like the mm-hmm. whole lamb. Mm-hmm. All right, verse 10, it says, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Verse 11, the point. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, mm-hmm. your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Mm-hmm. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Mm-hmm. All right? Because the Lord's about to bring the spirit of Yahweh Shai over yeah. to put in word. Mm-hmm. You know? And whoever, you know, Pretty much had the, the blood on oh the doorpost will get passed over. Yeah, yeah. But verse 11 clearly shows and states the Lord said, You better not have a spirit of complacency on mm-hmm. you. You should have a spirit of haste, yeah, yeah. have a spirit of uh, awareness, yeah, yeah. you know, situational awareness, seriousness. Seriousness. Because if I could just add to your yeah, point, because the Passover is, is supposed to be a solemn assembly, mm-hmm. assembly man. You know, just because it's a serious thing, man. Mm-hmm. Just a cut to, you know, all these, you know, these uh, these Israelites making it seem like it's a a, a party, man. Mm-hmm. You know, this is serious, man. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, the first scripture that we bought out, mm-hmm. when it said that I would serve Jerusalem with candlesticks, mm-hmm. that candlesticks is, is, is Yahweh Shah, man. Right. You know, that light, man. Yeah. You know? Okay, yeah. it's like, if I may, a uh, shalom to the Akim. On the comment board, Shalom. Shalom. Barzal, Deacon Barzal, Shalom. Shalom, Elder um, Aratiza. Khan, y'all brothers got it. Um, Yeah, I got some. This is um, 1 Corinthians 15, 
I'm sorry, verse 57. But thanks mm -hmm. be, but thanks be to the most high, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh HaMashiach. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, Ooh. unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Right. If you're always abounding, uh, so like, not you going, gotta, bro. Not <laughs> going up. Because if you're always abounding, you're not, you're not plateauing. Yeah. You're, moving, you're moving upward. Yeah, to mm -hmm. abound means to, to exactly. go up. To, to go upward. Up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a positive word. Yeah. Uh, you know, the scripture is also saying, what, Colossians in, yeah. the precept in Ecclesiastes 9. Uh, pretty much whatever you get your hand to do, do it with all that might. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think Colossians says do it heartily mm -hmm. towards the Lord and not towards yeah. men. Mm -hmm. And that's how you abound. Yeah. 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 Cause what? Uh, I'm going to read again from the top. And I'm also going to get that word abounding in the blue letter. Uh, this is 1 Colossians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, Slack it. Uh, Corinthians. Oh, Slack it, Slack it. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And um, I said that... Um, I'm going to get that word um, abounding in the blue letter in the Greek. I'm not going to try. Let me do it. Strong's G 4052. Petty Petty It says Petty Suro. And it says, it says to exceed a fixed number of measure. Mm -hmm. To be left over and above a certain number of measure. Ooh. So really, through the spirit, and through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah, the Holy Spirit, and the understanding we get through the scriptures, we're actually able to do more than we really should be able to do. If you can understand what I'm saying in the spirit. No, for sure. The, the, the Holy Spirit is allowing us to be really more than what we really are. That's the, <laughs> that's the parable of the talents, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the parable of the talents mm -hmm. is, if you want to give one word, if you were trying to you know, do a synopsis, it would be abounding. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you were given a talent, or two talents, the Lord expects you to make it forth. Right, yeah. You have your potential, mm -hmm. yeah, bring it out of you and do, and do more with it. Come, yeah, yeah. And do more with it. Mm -hmm. And to not flip and, you know, double or triple mm -hmm. is a sign of complacency. Mm -hmm. I got it. Oh, shit. Put it in yeah. my pipe. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. what you got to, bro? Yeah, it says uh, to exist or be at hand in abundance, to abound, overflow, to be abundantly furnished with, Mm. To have in abundance, abound in a thing, to boot, to be in affluence. You see, in Yahweh Shem Shai is not only uh, showing that he's with his men and, and how we're abounding in the spirit. Real soon, you're going to see a men of, of the Lord, man. You know, serves Yahweh Shem Shai abounding in every facet of life, man. Yeah. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Because uh, uh, we're storing, our head, we're storing our treasures up in heaven first. Mm -hmm. right? And, hey, the kingdom of heaven is within us. Right. So the the manifestation of heaven, you're gonna see it happen. You're gonna see it, the light shining. We're brought out of nine one. Yeah. That that light, Jerusalem being searched out with the candlesticks. That light's gonna be on those men. Those men gonna have the uh, the light. It's gonna be set on on the on the high tower, man. You know, set on the, on the mountaintop, so to speak. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? To where it's gonna be it's gonna be more and more clearly evident who Yahweh Shinyal Shai is dealing with in the spirit, man, because they're gonna be abounding in life, man, bro. Romans 8 and 16 says that those men who's abounding are going to be joint heirs with the Yahweh Shai, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, know how, you, know, you know how much work just off just being a joint heir with the Yahweh Shai, you know how much work that you have to put in in order to do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, so that's, the, that's the thing that, that the Lord is trying to make us, make us realize that this is this not just going to be given to you just because you know you're Israelite. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. You know? it's, it's the simple phrase Exceeding expectation. Yep. Yeah, bro, I was just doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Spirit, because yeah. Spirit, they was they was just doing reviews at my job. You know, mm -hmm. you know those that want to raise or want to you know move up, those are the people that are abounding. Mm -hmm. But if you've been with the company 10, 15 years, yeah. you ain't your you numbers know, still the same. Numbers still the same. Yeah. You got the same assessment from year one. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't expect anything in return for that, man. Mm -hmm. The Lord, this ministry and this work that we're doing for Yahweh Shem Shai is exactly that, man. Yeah. You know, when we go before the judgment uh, seat of, of the Lord and he opens up your portfolio, portfolio, he want to see where you were doing above and beyond what, 
was asked of you, man. Mm-hmm. Not just meat and standard. Yeah. You know, everything mm-hmm. meets, meets, meets. You mm-hmm. ain't got no exceeds. You ain't got no above. Yeah. You know, you just an average, uh, average Joe Smoke. The mm-hmm. average is is average. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know. But if you want to be in an, in a, in an elite group of men, mm-hmm. 144,000, yeah. you think average is going to get you there? But that that's what's up. Just going back to the sports analogy, that's what separates the superstars from just the regular role players. Yeah, role players. Yep. Is it a superstar super succeeds, man. Another, yep. another quick phrase, the cream of the crop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The guy was trying to separate that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I right, quick one for you. Quick one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is Second Ezra. I'm gonna get to the point and skip down. Second Ezra chapter two, verse forty-three, the classic one. It says, "In the midst of them, uh, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was and was more exalted, which I marvelled at greatly." Right. So the ones who were set crowns are the ones who exceeded expectations. Mm-hmm. All right, and they were rewarded. Uh, generously with the crown, which means, you know, like uh, pretty much rewarded with dominion. Mm -hmm. Um, And he says, which I marveled at greatly, which is a a form of like amusement. Mm -hmm. I love that word too. It means to divert one's attention towards. Mm -hmm. So skipping down is a point I want to bring out because the ones who expect uh, exceed expectations says verse 47, so he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the most high that's the one who set the crown, whom they have confessed in the world, then began I greatly to commend. Mm-hmm. That's the point. Those who you're talking about these jobs, if they're doing a pretty much an analysis on you to see if you deserve a raise, in this case, Yahweh Bar Shimei Al Shai does an analysis on you if you deserve a crime. Yeah. You see? Mm-hmm. It says, I have greatly commended. So if you exceed expectations, yeah, you're co- you're a commendable individual, mm-hmm. you see, yep. and that's something to be marvelled at. It says, "Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord." Mm-hmm. Right, and you can't you cannot be stagnant and complacent and be a service to the Lord. Okay. What servant is useful if they're stagnant and complacent? I need a. Doesn't it, compute. It doesn't. It, it don't. It don't add up. It don't, it's like oil and water. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's like it, shoot, it's like fire and water. Mm-hmm. They don't go together. All right? Being a, a complacent servant, the word complacent brings on pro, uh, procrastination, mm-hmm. being lethargic, being, you know, which is lazy, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. being settled on your leaves like we have brought out, mm-hmm. just sitting on your ass. What kind of what kind of servant is that? All right, slacky, wow. slacky, man. I got to bring this back out. We went to start it off, but as I was speaking, I'm thinking this servant, servant, servant. See, complacency really is uh, uh, you being in a lack, a lack of service, man. In which you're not, you're not serving the Lord. The Lord, you can't be a servant to the Lord if you're complacent. Oh, so or, like you, bro, yeah. just like you said, because I have just did a lesson on what's your purpose. Well, we have a, a, a general purpose on this earth to serve the Lord, which is fear the most high and keep his commandments. Right. That is your purpose. Mm-hmm. Well, with, under that purpose, you fall into your roles. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you're a, a complacent servant, you're not, um, what is it? Com- I'll say that. You're not completing or living up to your role mm-hmm. that the Lord had pre-wired you to be. You are uh, unprofitable sir. Unprofitable exactly. Sir. It's like I'm going back to the second definition of complacency. It says, it says an instant of usually unaware of uninformed self-satisfaction. Mm. See, if you're purposely staying uninformed and you're purposely serving yourself, you're not serving the Lord. You're not serving Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai. That's all. That's it. And, and, that, and that's a, a slap in the face, like you had mentioned earlier, because what he, I know in Philippians 2, one of my favorite chapters, but what did Yahweh Shai do when he came on onto the earth? It's like I didn't come to be ministered to, I came to minister. Yeah. Which going to minister means to be a servant. I came to serve you. Mm-hmm. I came to save your life. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. That y'all got it, brother. Yeah, kind of bring that out, bro. This is the book of Revelation, chapter three, verse fifteen. 
says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. And when thou wert cold or hot, that's a perfect picture. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, yeah. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yeah, lukewarm, complacent. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to go hot or you don't want to go cold. You yes, just want to be here. You just plateau as the brother brought out. You just complacent. You at ease. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord said he'd rather you be <laughs> cold or hot, man. Mm -hmm. No complacency. Right. You know, mm -hmm. either you, either you, because it'd be better if you not even known the truth, right. you know, than to just get this gift, this precious thing, and to hold it and, and be complacent with it and not That's try right. to further yourself in it or try right. to do more for the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. Even you know, even so, if you holding on to it, you know, being complacent like the talent in the pocket or in the napkin. Yeah. Well, guess what? Well, since you're doing that, well, guess what you're doing? You're not dispersing comfort. Yeah. You're not warning people. So, yeah. You're so e egotistical, egocentric. Mm -hmm. That's what you. That's what you're practicing. And I love you brought that out. Right. Lukewarm. Yeah. yeah. When you go into the word, it means weak. Yeah. You you just a weak ass individual. Yeah. Man, straight up. If you yeah. complacent, you weak. Yeah. You're scared of risk and reward. You're scared of sacrifice and and uh, and gain, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. yeah. You're weak. Mm -hmm. You you're an individual who will not sacrifice anything yeah. and not risk it. And how can how can the Lord use you like that? Right. You know, how can the Lord use a weak a weak individual? You know, who's not willing to even be helped. You just already got it all. The scripture saying, endure like a, like like a soldier. A, yeah, yeah, a soldier yeah. ain't weak, man. A mm -hmm. soldier ain't lukewarm. Yeah, Luke, so like lukewarm remind me of driving on the highway <laughs> and someone cruising in the fast lane. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Get your ass over The highway is built. Your ass either going fast mm -hmm. or slow. Yeah. So don't be lukewarm in the fast lane, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Try us out the way. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. I got I got one. Yeah, go ahead, bro. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Perfect. verse 24. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Ooh. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. You see, so that's what, you know, we are trying to attain, man, was what, that incorruptible crown. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't halfway run the marathon and expect to, to, to receive that same prize as someone who completed that marathon. Man. Right. It don't work like that, man. Yeah. You know? Right. So with, with us knowing that, like the brother quoted the priest up in, in um, Ecclesiastes 9, with us knowing the truth and knowing what we have to do to attain that in, incorruptible crown, do it with all our might. You know, go hard. Kind of, um, can Bobby, shall I read the part about uh, for striving for the master? Okay. Oh, because anybody that has mastered something, you best believe they went above and beyond yeah. to yeah. achieve a level of mastery. That's they sacrificed. They yeah. sacrificed. They did the necessary things. They didn't just settle, uh, uh, you know, in, in what uh, karate or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a green belt shit. I'm good. Right. <laughs> no, nigga, master the crowd, <laughs> go to black belt. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anybody that has achieved any sort of mastery, master's mm -hmm. degree, you know, mm -hmm. anything, that's the highest level, man. Right. And you think those people got there by being complacent? Right. No. So if we're striving for the masteries, you know, of your how about see me outside, you gotta get there, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta you know, see the you got, Yeah, you gotta get there. Yeah. Uh, this is verse twenty five. It says, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Yeah, and temperate goes into to um, uh, warding off certain lust, control, you know, yeah. control, yeah. self-control, yeah. a balance, you know. Mm -hmm. So in order to achieve the masteries along the way, you're going to have to, to cut certain things off in order for you to e expound, man. Yeah. You know, because yeah. things that hold you not getting to where you need to go uh, is ultimately you falling to to diverse lusts and temptations yeah. because that holds you back from doing more. Mm -hmm. That holds you back from exceeding, you know. But yeah. you, uh, that was it on that verse. Uh, I just a little bit more. If you want to close, you want to close out on it. Come, come, come. 
kind of uh, verse 26. Just two more verses. It says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. Mm -hmm. So fight I as lukewarm. Mm -hmm. And uncertainty, that's mm -hmm. that's a that's mm -hmm. a sign of being lukewarm. You know, mm -hmm. you neither cold nor hot. You, you kind of straddling the fence. You don't know. Listen. Well, should I go hard for this or should I just, you know, I just be doubtful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, I know enough. Well, so you lost patience. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a that's a mindset. Yeah, I really know enough, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, right. knowing the breakdowns and the prophecy is not gonna get me, you know, uh, a spot in the chair. You know, <laughs> mindset thinking like that is, mm -hmm. is is a sign of complacency. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. hey man, know these things. Right. Know what know what you're fully engulfed in, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I well know what you're in and be fully engulfed in it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can go that extra mile and, and go extra hard. You mm -hmm. know, for the things in which you believe in. All right, that shows a lack of faith, man, complacency, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you're not really sure. Like, if I put my all into this, or if I go hard, am I gonna be rewarded? Yeah, right. well, I really see you there. Complacency, yeah. we can we can equal that to being a quitter. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. you really quit on your best self. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you slip and fail one cool. time, you're like, like quit on your best self. Yeah. yeah, it says, "So fight I, not as one that beat of the air, yeah. but I keep under my body." And bring it into, into and bring it into subjection, mm. lest that be any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Oh, that's mm. some, that's some powerful words. Yeah, right? absolutely. To fight, to bring it into subjection. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You got to, man. You got to get on yourself, man. Yeah. It goes. Uh, I know the brother Zakaria. That if he's watching, he did a great lesson about uh, self examination. Yeah, yeah, that was a good lesson. You know? Yeah. And that's that's putting yourself into subjection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, okay. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brother got any more precepts? Hey, man, Lord willing, you know, the Spirit took over that lesson, really, man. Yeah. You know, man? <laughs> and Lord willing, you know, it was edifying to the flock, man. Until next time, we're going to end it by giving all praise, glory, and honor to. Yeah, how about Shem? Yeah, how about Shem? How about we would also like to give double honors to our elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.